This is the story of an American revolution. A revolution in the methods of distributing consumer goods to rural and small town customers. The leader of the revolution, Aaron Montgomery Ward. Ward started his mail order business in 1872, setting in motion a force that dramatically reduced the cost of merchandise to rural America. Ward was an unlikely candidate to author such a success story. Born in New Jersey in 1844, his family moved to Michigan when he was quite young. There, at the age of 14, he left school to work as an apprentice for a manufacturing concern. A few years of exposure to such work convinced him happiness would have to be found in some other occupation. In 1866, he moved to Chicago, where he secured a job at a wholesale merchandise company. He worked as a clerk there and at several other companies, including a dynamic new department store called Marshall Field and Company. Out of those clerking experiences, Ward began to envision an opportunity to make a variety of merchandise available to farmers and small towns at prices less than those they were paying. Mail ordering seemed the ticket. He could mail catalogs describing his merchandise to small town and farm family customers, they could send in their orders by mail, and the merchandise could be delivered to them by mail. In this way, Ward could eliminate the costs of middlemen in the chain of distribution. And the cost savings could be passed on to the customer, while Ward himself made a profit on his merchandise. Although Ward was not the first person to conceive of a mail-order business, he was the first to be willing to take the risk of trying the idea. In 1871, he withdrew his life savings to purchase a batch of wholesale merchandise. But before he could mail his simple catalog to potential customers, the Great Fire struck Chicago and destroyed the warehouse where Ward had stored his merchandise. Chagrined but not defeated, Ward determined to try again. Working as a clerk for another year, and saving every cent of his earnings he possibly could, he was ready to try again within a year. In 1872, he took his savings and the capital provided by two partners and once again purchased merchandise at wholesale prices. He printed a one-page price list, mailed it to Midwestern farmers, and waited for what he expected to be a flood of orders to come in by return mail. Some orders did come, but not enough to convince Ward's partners that the business would succeed. In 1873, they sold their shares in the business to Ward and advised him to consider abandoning the venture. Ward refused to give up. Instead, he carefully reviewed his strategy, hoping to find answers to the question of why farmers were not rushing to buy his high-quality, low-priced merchandise. He concluded the problem was one of credibility. Farm customers were wary of his catalog's claims. One solution, he decided, was to gain the endorsement of farm organizations. And so Ward began to attend the meetings of a large farm organization called the National Grange of the Patrons of Husbandry, promoting his business. On at least one occasion, he made a special offer to entertain Grange order takers in Chicago if the local Grange could obtain $300 worth of orders. This strategy worked. Orders from farmers' clubs and the Granges fueled a sharp expansion of the business. Ward hired his brother-in-law, George Thorne, 
to work for him on a full-time basis in 1873. A year later, Ward quit his clerking job to devote himself full-time to his own mail-order business. In 1875, Ward introduced a new sales tool, the money-back guarantee. This concept had already been introduced by several large department stores in various cities across the United States, but Ward was the first to use it in the national mail order business. The guarantee further enhanced the credibility of his business, and orders continued to expand. Ward's original price list of 1872 was printed on a single sheet, listing 163 items. By 1875, Ward was mailing his potential customers a thick catalog listing 3,899 items of merchandise, which could be ordered by mail. In a few short years, Ward's concept had proven itself workable and profitable. Over the next two decades, Ward customers were treated to a constant change in products offered for sale. But the basic business philosophy of quality merchandise at low prices did not change. Under Aaron Montgomery Ward's leadership, the company continued to apply those principles which had led to its initial success. In 1893, Ward sold his controlling interest in the business to his partner, George Thorne. Ward could look back with satisfaction on his accomplishments. The mail order business which he had founded had brought low cost distribution to rural areas which previously had been isolated. Ward's concept had contributed to a better life for the American farm family. But Ward was not looking backward. He was too busy leading one of the nation's early environmentalist crusades. Ward had become convinced that Chicago's lakefront area should be transformed into a beautiful public park available to all citizens. At the time, the lakefront served as a dumping ground for trash and a home for penniless tramps. Ward's proposals were not warmly received by the public, and for a time he waged a lonely battle to enlist public support. There were occasions when the local press criticized him in print and with cartoons. But after spending 20 years of his time and a considerable part of his fortune in the effort, Ward finally won public support for his idea. Local government agreed to turn the lakefront into a huge public park. Today, that park stands as a silent tribute to the vision of a man who truly embodied the American dream, Aaron Montgomery Ward.